Hello and a very good day to all. I am K. Suryadipti, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Management Studies, Gayatri Vidya Parishit College for degree and PG courses, Vishakapatnam. Today, I am going to introduce to you about the paper Patient Care Behavior, in which we will be learning about uh, the ways in which the organization uh, lays down the basic concept of how they try to maintain relation with the patient in the hospital scenario. Remember that in any organization uh, who tries to do a business, the customer is the primary motto to influence the business. In the healthcare scenario or in the hospital sector, the services provided are to ensure that all the services they provide are delivered in a much more satisfied manner towards the patient because here the patient is the customer of the hospital. So in case we want to ensure that we are able or we want to deliver an efficient way of services to the patient, we need to first understand how the organization, uh, personnel and staff are being able to manage their circumstances. So for that, we need to understand what people do in the organization and how do they work about things, what are the ways in which they try to understand or analyze the processes that they adapt in order to ensure uh, effective, working, uh, effective working strategies and based on the working patterns, we try to take evidence-based interventions to improve in the which they try to deal with these people. So ultimately we are trying to understand the organization behavior and the through which the organization culture is reflected. Now poorly designed or developed systems always encounter with more number of issues in hospitals and these issues can be referred to as medical errors in the hospital. So as we have a basic understanding that organization behavior management tries to develop intervention strategies to improve the work as well as the organization culture in the way out to ensure high efficiency of performance and productivity output. And this is influenced by the behavior of the staff at various levels in the organization. Now, Today in the session, we are going to learn about the basic concepts uh, of the healthcare system in order to ensure, you know, how the working mechanism is at each level so that the work efficiency and collaboration connectivity uh, happens in a much more convergent way. We need to understand how the uh, organization uh, pattern in the healthcare system, especially in India is and then try to understand the hospital organization structure charts with reference to different types of hospitals so that we will be knowing their roles and functionalities and the process and procedures in which they try to operate in reference to the line. It is clear that every individual in the group is being influenced by the system in which he tries to occur, contributing to both the positive and the negative part. So. Basically, the patient care behavior, it tries to merge with the organization behavior management concept which tries to improve the ways in which we try to approach the healthcare delivery process. Now that we are sure about the connectivity between the organization behavior and the patient care behavior in the organization, let us now come down to the fundamentals of understanding what the hospital healthcare structure is in our country. In India, we basically have the three triage system referred to as a primary healthcare system, secondary healthcare system and the tertiary healthcare system. In the primary healthcare system, uh, we have the primary healthcare centers and the sub-centers. In general, there are about uh, two of an about uh, 25,000 uh, population. These uh, public health sectors and sub-centers are located at the village levels or a cluster of villages so that it is being easily approached for them. Now coming down to the secondary healthcare system, 
they are referred to as district hospitals also for about 50000 population uh, on an average these district hospitals have been located and the other kind of district hospitals in which categorized under the public hospitals are also coming under the secondary care category now going into the tertiary care level we have the regional hospitals in the regional hospitals generally we have the uh, regional top hospitals which from which all the referral cases from the primary health care center and the secondary center that is the district hospitals are further referred to the tertiary levels at which are located in the regional head of the uh, location in the regional head of the location now under the regional hospitals we also have apart from the regional head hospitals we have the medical college hospitals also covering under the regional hospital for you to give an example if we in andhra pradesh state if we take a cluster as srikakulam visakhapatnam vijayanagaram as a cluster the phc centers we have a in bimli mandalam we have a phc center located that is one example at the primary care to a district hospital we can consider any village in the vijayanagaram district or in srikakulam district hospital the government hospital referred in is referred to as the district hospitals in the secondary care the regional hospital is in this cluster of vijayanagaram srikakulam and visakhapatnam that is the north east zone cluster we have the prime uh, tertiary center that is the main head for this particular region uh, this hospital we all uh, which is very famous known as the kgh hospital is referred to as a regional hospital also so all these cases on the referral system from the primary to the secondary that is from phc center to a district hospital center are further referred to as referred to the regional health hospital that is in kgh so now i hope this particular uh, concept of the primary secondary health the purpose is to ensure that you know we have a right way of delivery uh, healthcare system at all levels so this is that model which tries to tell that we are being rooted till the ground in this way now the public health sector or uh, which includes hospitals uh, through the public health uh, includes your railway defense employee uh, esi all these hospitals also categorized under your uh, under the secondary care healthcare system now further the healthcare system in india can be categorized as public healthcare system private healthcare system and the indigenous system of medicine under the public healthcare system the primary health care tries to include the phc centers and the sub centers which are located at the mandal levels of the village cluster of uh, villages together become a mandal and you have a mandal hospital that is your primary health center and there are sub centers in the villages so these are all and at this level we have the anganwadi workers the anms asha workers being working efficiently at this particular level now under the public health center we also have the hospitals or health centers which include the community health centers at the secondary level rural hospitals district hospitals teaching hospitals and specialty hospitals which which come under this particular public health center health center at the secondary level as we have discussed in the earlier slide so community health centers rural hospitals at all rural headquarters then we have the district hospitals uh, as example we have taken vijayanagaram we have the vijayanagaram district hospital srikakulam we have the mems uh, srikakulam uh, district hospital and teaching hospitals where we have different teaching hospitals located to each district catering also facilitate the public health center now under the private health sector we have the polyclinic nursing homes and the general op clinics that the consultants try to see are categorized under the private healthcare sector the third category of indian healthcare system includes the indigenous system of medicine now this is different from the regular allopathy model in the indigenous system we have the uh, ancient methods of the ayurveda yoga siddha and unani uh, homeopathy models of uh, healthcare system delivery in which uh, these approaches are cat are something different from the regular healthcare system which are categorized under our indian healthcare system now that you know how the structure of the healthcare system is we need to know what are the different functionaries 
and departments and the personals who will be working under those departments now in any hospital or in a healthcare system we have two categories that is the clinical healthcare system and the non clinical in under the clinical system we generally have uh, the consultants of different uh, medical services that includes your general physician cardiology neurology ophthalmology ENT dermatologist all these categories of services come under the clinical consultations under which there are uh, investigations happening general op is being seen admissions of cases uh, blood transfusions happening and also data reveals when is surgery is happening intensive care operations happening at the surgery theaters casualty management emergency management all these aspects are covered under the clinical category of the hospital now under the non clinical category the operations that are covered include the administrative operations or the management operations of the organization now under the non clinical category in the hospitals we have the front office billing maintenance and material management departments then we have the guest uh, pro we have the information it department managing then we have the emergency management uh, unit we also have the hospitality and uh, housekeeping departments which come come under the uh, non clinical departments we have the fire and safety management quality assurance uh medical record department all these categorize under the non clinical departments under the health hospital now when we are trying to look we have different heads for ensuring a more efficient way of delivering or uh, monitoring the system for you to understand in a more uh, comprehensive manner i have taken an example of a teaching hospital where we try to see the different personal staffs at each level uh, to and their line management staff in which they try to operate now in a teaching hospital generally we have the governing body under which the director and under the director we have the hospital services biomedical services academic services and administrative services under the hospital services we generally have a head who takes care of the clinical part and the head who takes care of the non clinical part generally all the uh, clinical part uh, is covered under the medical superintendent and the academic uh, head of the academics because we because this is a teaching hospital we also have the academics part into it so all the hods uh, of the departments which include both the uh, clinical and the regular anatomy physiology biochemistry even these departments also categorized pathology are also categorized under the hospital services and all these operations are under the medical superintendent who tries to observe the ways in which they are functioning operating and working so this also includes the patient care service in the hospital then the security services outpatient department medical records department that is referred to as the mrd department purchase rece reception social workers stores all these categories under the hospital services because in a teaching hospital basically hospital is one unit which is referred to as the practical lab for the students to lively learn on different categories of patients and the ways in which they try to operate and manage the healthcare system are all practically learned in the hospital now when it comes to academic part we have the dean who ensures that the academic system of uh, education management is happening in a efficient manner who tries to delegate the uh, in line of instructions to the associate register deputy register library and medical so this is how the line of instructions and commands go now under them we all further have the associate heads now apart from the hospital services and academic parts we generally have the overall hospital management that is the administration who look who looks into the overall aspects and that includes the finance administrator officer the public relations officer and the deputy director administration who looks into the day to day uh, operations of the organization as a whole now click quickly to recall from what we have learned from the previous slide 
would you all be able to now recall what are the roles of a medical superintendent okay if not we can recap it now this slide tells to tell that under the medical superintendent we have the hospital administrator the hod is of the hospital administrator assistant director professor and the nursing superintendent now under the hospital administrator we have the next chain of commands going under which they try to ensure the work efficiency of sanitation hygiene and sanitation of the organization security aspects of the organization pest and rodent controls in all the wards and of in all the wards of the hospital quality control of the products that include the cssd department reagents cleaning reagents maintenance reagents of the lab control how the operations are doing uh, being happening in the clinical department uh, with reference to the quality as well as the non clinical things that is how is the billing happening is the billing being recorded properly as they being uh, right refer referral management system happening all these are considered under the quality control aspects now under the hod of the hospital administrator administrator you have the supporting services op services registration admission cash billing and discharge the supporting services in general in the hospital include all the uh, paraclinical thing that is your physiotherapy blood bank uh, dietetics department food service management department then we have the medical records department all these departments come under the supporting services department who ensure to work in collaboration with the uh, regular hospital theater functionaries to ensure that they are able to deliver the services to the patient in time we further have the assistant director who ensures to look after the stores and purchase of the equipment that is required for the hospital they try to maintain accountability of this of this all the supplies uh, you have the establishment or the referred to as the hr department then we have the general section and the payment section which is under the control of the assistant director in the hospital then further we have the professors that is the academic part and under the professor the line of uh, commanders professor associate professor assistant professor senior resident and post graduates and the next category of uh, is the nursing superintendent who tries to control and uh, have a smooth functioning of the nursing department in the hospital so you have the head nurses staff nurses who try to report to the nursing superintendent who nursing superintendent further reports to the medical superintendent in the hospital so all the leaves and all are leave leave application or recruitment of the nursing staff has to go through the proper channel through the nursing superintendent that is the ns to the medical superintendent to the administrator or to the administrator in the hospital now once we know the how the functionings happen in a line command model in the organization it becomes easy for us to understand the job roles and the responsibilities of these personals and staff so that they will be able to do their roles in the in the most justifiable way possible now let us understand why are we really studying the patient care behavior the purpose is to ensure that we understand the roles and responsibilities of different medical professionals and management in order to ensure a smooth functioning of the organization the primary goal of any organization is to cater better services because hospital is a service organization they try to cater services to the patient in such a way that there is more satisfaction from the patient now if we really want to ensure a good satisfaction in a patient what is that we have to look into we need to see the effectiveness and efficiency ways in which we are able to work or ensure that kind of productivity within the organization and this is not to be a one time one it should be a continuous way and to ensure the overall quality of the organization for a long term now for this the core components that has to be considered to ensure to deliver a quality service or a satisfaction service to a patient is the kind of quality that we provide in the service quantity that is 
the number of beds that we have occupancies per day number of ops been ops referred to the outpatient department and ips referred to the inpatient department so how many cases are we able to take in are we doing the discharges in time are we able to give the right kind of discharge rep report are the uh, lab reports being done in time and being delivered to the customer all these are the quantity aspects number of reports generated and dispatched is the quantity of the operations that we are doing in the organization and are they being doing in time which is very very important because time is the common constraint which is very common to everybody so this particular time we need to ensure that whatever kind of service we are doing we are able to do it in time especially because hospital is an emergency care management if we will not be able to do things in time we will not be able to save lives so it is very important to ensure that the kind of service that we are providing should be both quality and in time and which should also match the cost effectiveness of the so that it really does not hurt the pockets of the customers that are the and the customers are none other than our patients so the four c's of the patient centric care include culture care communication and collaboration culture refers here to the organization culture that is the organization behavior the ways in which the organization tries to disseminate its visions the organization mission with a with a broad way vision to collaborate till the top manage from the bottom management to the top management the organization culture is being tapped so that the values are being disseminated in the most required manner to the customer so we need to ensure that the organization culture is in the much efficient manner which is the very important aspect for a patient centric service the second one is the care the care model is something like in the care model of service uh, patient centric care there are different personals or different departments which are interlinked so that you know we will be able to provide a better care care is something that it is not possible just only by a doctor or only by a nurse or only or the pathologist who takes the samples it is a collaborative work so that is why care can be delivered when there is right kind of collaboration and communication because if there is no proper communication or there is no proper caption in time so for example suppose a patient wants a blood uh to be implanted during a surgery so it is very important that the requirement of the blood has to be immediately documented and been sent to the required registered and sent to the required department immediately to ensure that you know we will be able to get the product for doing this particular service for the patient in the operation theater now when is this possible when there is the right channel of communication happening within the organization this is possible so in order to ensure the right kind of communication we need to have a collaborative working mechanism so that the inter collaboration between the departments is very transparent as well as very clear so that what is required is being instructed in the right way and being so that there are no hiccups or hinges in between these communications this will help these four c's will really help us to ensure a very good quality of patient centric care what we are trying to envision for in the hospital care services which is to be commonly understood in the patient care behavior in the organization further in the patient centric care we need to define the scale and scope of the condition to generate evaluate alternative solutions decide on the mutual acceptable solutions for that particular instant implement solutions evaluate for the effectiveness and provide feedback so what is very important here is for a patient centric to be more efficient we need to continuously do, do the audit of the processes in which we are adapting to do our work so every time we want to comfort a patient we need to audit whether this is a right way am i able to really deliver the right kind of services if i am having a manual register system am i able to save time okay now if i have a, a pc and through the pc i am able to generate a op number 
then yes i am trying to reduce the waiting time of the patient and this is the way i am trying to give more comfort to the patient further we also try to motivate by patient by di giving them directions suppose we have the right kind of layouts in the organization the patient need not start inquiring at every turn that which side he has to go he need not be he will be self directed when there are sign boards so this becomes that the patient is uh, if he even if a, from an op he is been referred to go to the radiology department for a scan then you know he need not keep on asking everybody on the way that how do i go to the radiology department the sign boards help him facilitate himself so that uh, you know he gets motivated to go directly to the radiology department further it is very important to acknowledge the patient's requirement as an individual because every time there is no readiness of the patient the moment we refer the patient for a radiology department it is not very important that the patient has been ready to go to this particular session to for a radiology so in order to ensure we need to be prepared and acknowledge all his aspects that he is being tailored and give him a counseling session and the need of the uh, diagnostic that is being suggested has to be explained to the patient and this explanation is the foundation of the information that as through an organization that we are able to give it to the uh, as a service provider we are able to do it to the customer that is our patient and what does this information cater to for a better decision making whether the patient wants to take the uh, scan immediately or he wants to take some time to come back or he wants to do it at some other place so whatever kind of information that we provide helps the patient to take a better decision in the same way when we as a service providers try to understand what are the needs and the requirements or uh, the gaps for the patient we will be able to facilitate them in their decision for example i might not be able to immediately spend that amount because i have through my organization i will be reimbursed by telling them this the organization will be able to tell me that yes we are having cghsc or we are empanel esi so you can get reimbursement from this particular through our own channel we will be giving you the receipt so only when i come to know this information that you know i will be reimbursed i will be able to take a uh, corrective decision whether i want to do it immediately or i want to postpone my radiology part uh, radiology scan part so this is how the organization from their side tries to facilitate now when i when will they try to be able to uh, share this information only when they know our requirement and my requirement is that i will i am not ready to pay immediately so because i am not able to pay immediately and when i tell them this they will tell that because they have empanelment with cghs or esi i will be able to uh, they will be able to facilitate my payment process through this channel so here communication in both way patient way and the service organization way is very important and this further helps for a better decision making as to together so this is how the holistic approach of patient centric care actually happens i hope this examples has enabled you to understand the important aspects of uh, communication collaboration in the care management of the patient we will be trying to learn the ways in which we can improve patient care in our next session in trying to understand the roles of uh, different medical professionals in the organization still then thank you